Many Granite Staters have already made the decision to get vaccinated, but there's a lot of you who are still hesitant. And some are people are confused about the new CDC mask guidance, so we asked us to send in your questions. We do want to welcome back state epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chan and Dr. Beth Daly, the chief of the state's infectious disease control. Good evening to both of you. We want to get straight back to those questions, and we start with Dr. Daly. This question comes in, are there any concerns about children getting the vaccine, even if they're going through puberty? Have there been any studies looking at affecting growth or development? Great question. So we know that people might be concerned about offering this new vaccine to their children, but you know, vac vaccines have been around for decades and children have been receiving many vaccines throughout their lifetime. And the technology that these vaccines are based on is, works much like these other vaccines do. We don't expect there to be any long-term side effects from being vaccinated. And in fact, it'll protect you from COVID-19. So certainly it's okay to have these concerns. We encourage anyone who has questions to speak to their healthcare provider if they have any specific questions about their uh, particular child. However, these vaccines have been studied in children. They have been found to be very safe and very effective and ultimately they will protect the child from potential hospitalization or death, which can occur in children rarely with COVID-19. And Dr. Chan, Cheryl Batista writes in saying, we have a high risk toddler in the household who is not allowed to get vaccinated yet because of his age. Should the fully vaccinated adults in the household still wear masks in public because the toddler is at high risk? Yeah, that's a that's a, a great question, and I appreciate that the uh, the parents here or the guardians are, are trying to look out for the protection of their toddler who's unable to be um, vaccinated and potentially at, at higher risk. Um, you know, vaccines are very very effective, and you know we we agree with the um, new new the new the newly released CDC guidance uh, that uh, vaccination protects someone both from symptomatic and asymptomatic infection and helps prevent spread of COVID-19 within the community. Uh, but no, no vaccine is going to be 100%. And so in the situation that this person is describing, um, you know, again, this is an individual choice, but I, I think it, it makes sense uh, for there continue to be um, mitigation measures, mask use, social distancing practiced by uh, these parents in order to protect uh, their their higher risk um, child who if they were to, if that child were to come down with COVID-19 uh, could potentially have more severe disease depending on the person's risk factors. And Dr. Daly, we have a lot of questions about visiting family members. Here's one from Susie saying my daughter and her four children are coming to visit us in New Hampshire this June. They live in Georgia and all tested positive for COVID back in December. They are not vaccinated. We are. My question is, how safe is it for other family members to be in close contact with them during their visit? One of the family members is a child with type 1 diabetes. Great question. So right now there is still potential risk of COVID-19 in our communities. It's still circulating at a substantial level in New Hampshire, but also potentially even at higher rates in other states. So certainly you need to consider where these individuals are coming from and whether they're potentially likely or to be reinfected that can happen after 90 days of your initial COVID-19 infection. Certainly we encourage those individuals before traveling to get vaccinated, but if they are unvaccinated and they do visit and you have that unvaccinated child in your household, uh, that is not without risk that they, they could potentially bring COVID-19 with them and transmit it. So certainly everybody has to consider those types of risks and whether they're worth taking right now. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Chan, let's talk masks. This question comes in. At what point can we all follow CDC mask guidelines? The viewer says, I had to run a few errands today and everywhere still has masks and everyone still wearing them. Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. And, and this is something that it, um, we're discussing and actually struggling with at a national level. Um, when is the appropriate time to begin to pull back on some of these um, mitigation measures? Uh, you know, many states across the country continue to have high levels of COVID-19. Uh, we're working um, very diligently to try and get uh, vaccination rates um, increased. But but to be um, to, to be frank, you know, there is still COVID in uh, in the communities, and there still is there's still risk. Um, you know. 
CDC released some updated guidance yesterday, uh, and that's guidance that we're currently still reviewing and discussing. We actually just had a call with the CDC to discuss their, their updated guidance yesterday uh, and hope, hope to have more clarification around some of these um, points in the, in the coming days. But, you know, we have guidance that's out, th out there that continues to um, recommend, you know, implementation and use of uh, these mitigation measures like face mask use and uh, social distancing when in, when in public settings. Um, and it's, those remain important tools uh, to continue to drive the numbers lower so that we can all get back to uh, more normal societal functioning. Great advice. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more of your questions. 